Stayallday.com. Stay now tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. Today's topic is we are moving into part six of our ongoing series of how to be a wolf. Before we get started, two things quickly. First of all, my daily motivation, Monday motivation message is guaranteed to have you focus sharp and on point to start your day or your week respectively. All you got to do is be a member of my texting community. It's free to join. Text me at the number 305-384-6894. Secondly, work on your game, university. That's the place where we will start taking your game personally and professionally to its next level, starting immediately today with my direct help, your access to my best material on mindset, excuse me, strategy, systems, and accountability. We have frameworks, programs, and systems around all of these things. You get full access to that, and you get access to me as a direct coach. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. I mean, what more could you ask for? With that out the way, let's pick it up right where we left off at point number 16. How to be a wolf. Number 16, stay hungry for growth. Wild wolves do not consume personal and professional development. Their growth is in the form of finding the next thing to kill for the next meal that they eat. All right, that's their growth. The growth for a wolf is to keep eating and to not starve. They don't find a meal. If a wolf doesn't find a wheel for enough consecutive days, it's over. They die of starvation. You, on the other hand, your growth is in the form of personal and professional development. And if you go long enough without doing any personal and professional development, your growth ends. You end up stagnant and you are literally going backwards because the world is moving forward while you're standing still. All right. So that's your death. All right, you don't literally die. Again, your stakes are not as uh, not as uh, urgent as they are as they are for the wolf in a literal sense. But the whole point of me doing the series is to help you get your mind more in that frame, even though in reality, that's not exactly what it is. But you can create your own reality of making yourself much more urgent and much more locked into getting done the things that you want to get done, which is the main thing that most people want anyway. I talk to a lot of people like you, or if I've even talked to you, every single day I talk to people who want to do more of these things, and I'm giving you the formula to actually do it. Okay, so you got to put yourself in the frame of mind like the wolf. If I don't grow or get, get better today, I'm going to die. Because wolves, that's their reality. That's how they live. So you need to keep learning, keep developing yourself, keep learning new skills, keep your current skills sharp, and stay open to new opportunities in your life and your career. You got to be hungry for those opportunities the same way that a wolf always has his eyes open for his next possible meal. And as we explained in a previous installment of the series, that a wolf or a lion who just ate something, if it sees another meal in front of it, is going to go kill that one too. Why? Because that's what it does. Not because it needs it. Not because it can come up with a logical justification for it. <clears throat> These are all bullshit excuses that humans use to not do things. It's because it wants it. So that's simple enough. That's a good enough reason. All right. You need to have that mentality. It has always has his eyes open for the next meal because the next meal determines whether or not they will live the next week and the week after that and the week after that. Also, any other wolves who they may be responsible for are dependent on them continually finding, finding meals. So look at your growth the same way. If you stop growing, your kids may starve, your coworkers may starve, your community may starve, your fans may starve, your audience may starve, your customers may starve, and you might starve. And if you're starving, everybody else is going to starve first. So that's why you need to be continually focused on ongoing growth and always looking for the next opportunity as if the next opportunity determines whether or not you live or die. Moving on to point number 17. We're talking here today about how to be a wolf, continuing our, on, continuing our ongoing series. Number 17, learn to collaborate. Wolves are pack animals. Again, some may run on their own at times, but wolves instinctively know, however, that when they do come together, how can we work together? How can we do this as a team? Humans, on the other hand, we must learn how to work together and continue to cultivate our collaborative skills because we live in an era of collaboration. That's the world that we're living in today. In case any of you didn't know, we are in the era of collaboration where you don't need to do all the work on your own, regardless of how hardworking or how skilled you may be. You don't need to do everything on your own because there are only so many skills any human being has and the skills that you are best at, that's where your focus should be so that you can then pass off everything else, put all of your resources into the skills you're best at, which means it's going to produce the highest return on investment. So I have a skill that I'm a level 10 at, another skill I'm a level 5 at. If I give 10 units of effort to a level 10 skill, let's multiply 10 by 10, I get 100. 
But if I put 10 units of effort into a level five skill, and multiply 10 by five, I only get 50. So you don't want to be putting your resources into something that you're not great at because the potential is lower. And those things that you're not great at, it doesn't mean that they don't get done. It just means they don't get done by you. And that's where you put other people on those jobs. And again, that's where you start collaborating with others. You find somebody who is a level 10 at a thing in which you're a level five. And then when you're a level 10, it's something that they're a level five. Now you have a collaboration. They get something, you get something. It's a symbiotic relationship and everyone gets a higher return on investment of their resources simply because everybody's doing the thing that they're best at rather than doing something that you're mediocre at. Wolves understand this without any explanation. Humans, on the other hand, we need to have this explained to us and explicated to us so that we can make sense of it and then we got to go use it. So wolves instinctively know how to work together. Humans have to learn how to work together, but we must learn how to work together because it's necessary for your survival. We live in an era of collaboration. You don't need to do all the work on your own, regardless of how hardworking or how skilled you are and how skilled you may think you need to be. It is much easier and much more efficient to leverage the skills of others and allow them to leverage your skills so that you can move yourself and everyone else forward faster. This is why you should be leveraging collaboration sharpening your ability to collaborate and creating collaborations with others. All right, this is what smart human beings do because this is where the game is these days. This is where the opportunity is at. Having quality relationships has no downside. And having more quality relationships has no downside. It's not like, for example, eating candy. Uh, eating some candy might not kill you, but if you eat a whole bunch of candy, the more of it you eat, the worse the situation gets. Right? Relationships is not, are not like that. Having one quality relationship is great, but having five is even better. Having 30 is even better. Now, there is a question of how many quality relationships can you maintain at once, but let's just stay with my, my uh, get the spirit of my point here rather than uh, looking at it by the letter. More quality relationships with more quality people is always a good thing. Now, again, it may not all be deep and intimate, but knowing 30 people who are doing something and they have a positive uh, image of you, a positive impression of you versus knowing only 10 is better to have the 30. And it's even better to have 100. Again, it doesn't mean you have to talk to all of them every day. But if you have 100 people who are all about something, who all think of you in a positive way and they know who you are, that's a great thing. And it's better. It's 10 times better than having only 10 people that way. You get what I'm saying? So humans, you must learn how to collaborate and work with others because, again, this is where the opportunity is in business these days. And this is where the money's going to the people who are able to collaborate and put their forces together so that everybody can move a lot further forward and do so a lot faster and more effectively and efficiently. So you want to keep leveraging collaborations, sharpening your ability to build and nurture relationships, and then create collaborations within those relationships. Again, there is no downside to this. And the more of them you have, the better off you are. You should always be on the lookout for more possible collaboration partners. Because when you're collaborating with others, sometimes they can go out and do all the effort for the hunt, but you still get to eat. But when you're by yourself, as the lone wolf metaphorically, Every time you eat, you have to do all the work and you got to do all the work defending it. But if you with the pack, maybe sometimes they do more of the work. You still get to eat and maybe and they'll be defending it while you get to eat. So you don't have to worry about keeping your head on the score because they're doing it for you. That's the power of collaboration. So keep looking for ways to collaborate with others and partner with them so that everybody can win more and faster. Point number 18. We're talking here today about how to be a wolf, our ongoing series. Number 18, guard your energy. Speaking of what I just said, guarding your energy. Being that wolves have to kill things to eat, wolves must prioritize their rest time. They got to prioritize when to not be running around and jumping around because they got to save that energy for the hunt, for the deer they might have to chase now. Because if a wolf doesn't rest, they won't have energy for the time they got to kill something. So they don't have time to be playing around, playing games, because the energy they used on the game, they won't have for the hunt that literally determines their life. Again, humans, we, we differ very much in this. We can spend a whole lot of time doing a whole bunch of bullshit. Because we don't have to go hunt down our food. We can call Uber Eats and it comes to us as long as we have the money. The money is a form of energy, by the way. But is it a little bit different than the, what I'm talking about here is a direct, direct correlation between the energy we put out physically and then having to use that energy to go get food. You don't have to use your physical energy to go get food. You can make a phone call, put something on your phone, and the food, boom, it arrives. Wolves don't have that luxury. So when I tell you to guard your energy... I mean, guard your energy for the things that matter for you and don't waste your energy on things that don't matter for you. You need to know what those are. So if a wolf comes up short, catch and pray again, often enough, game over. You need to guard your energy in the same way, but for different reasons. You want to guard your positive energy against the negative people, the anxious people, the fearful people, all of those who look to suck energy away from you. 
and you want to prioritize setting yourself up with constant positive energy and forward thinking intentions, which provide energy to you through conscious focus and programs your subconscious mind to start working on your behalf because your subconscious controls 85% of your thought processes. So you start getting the outcomes that you want through your subconscious without you even having to consciously think about what you're doing. All right. So these are all ways that you prioritize your energy. Remember that energy is 85% of the job in life. When you have energy, you can pretty much get anything done with enough energy. Even if you have no knowledge, no information, no intellect, you can get things done with enough energy. But if you have a bunch of knowledge, a bunch of information, a bunch of intellect, and a bunch of resources and no energy, no capacity to do work, then you will still come up short. And there are many people out there who have plenty of resources, but no energy, and therefore nothing happens. And people who have a whole bunch of energy and no resources, they're able to make something happen because they can just go do a whole bunch of random stuff because they have so much energy. Eventually, they luckily, they stumble across the right thing when they didn't even know they were doing it. They didn't even know how they found it, but they found it. Why? Because they had the energy to try. If you don't have the energy to try, then there's only so far you can go, regardless of how much, uh, how resourced, knowledgeable, or skilled you may be. You need to have the capacity to actually put that stuff to work at some, on some level. But all that said, let's recap today's class, which is part, I believe this is part six, if I'm correct, of our ongoing series of how to be a wolf. Number 16, stay hungry for growth. Wild wolves do not consume personal and professional development. Their growth is killing and eating things. Your growth is continuing to personally and professionally develop yourself because if you're not moving forward, you're standing still. The world is moving forward, so that means you're going backwards on a treadmill. Not a good idea. Eventually, they throw you off. Number 17, learn to collaborate. Wolves are pack animals, and they instinctively know how to fall in line within a pack when they start working together. Humans do not instinctively know this. Some humans do, but many humans do not. We have to learn how to do it. I suggest you get better at this because the better you are collaborating, the more you can pass off tasks that you shouldn't be doing onto others who should be doing them. And vice versa. They can pass stuff that they shouldn't be doing on to you. And you do what you do best. They do what they do best. Everybody wins in that process of collaboration. Number 18, guards your energy. Being that wolves have to kill things to eat, they can't waste their energy on nonsense. And you, being that your subconscious mind controls 85% of your thought processes, you want to make sure that your thoughts are not being clouded by nonsense and garbage that you are taking in, which is draining your energy and directing your energy towards things that aren't helping you get to where you want to go or helping you do what you want to do in life. That's why you need to be very diligent about your, how your energy is being used. All that said, tomorrow we'll get into the next part of this. Make sure you text and you're in my community. Also, you're ready to work on your game with me as your direct coach so that you can become a wolf in your business, in your personal life, in your pursuit of success, your pursuit and acquirement of success, attainment of success. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. Links down below in the description to have me as your direct coach get access to our bulletproof mindset, our business builder framework, our work on your game system, our next mission system, 30 days of discipline, ASAP confidence, selling yourself, content machine, uh, 30,000 pieces of material when it comes to your personal and professional development, all created and, uh, what's the word, curated by me inside the university. Again, that's work on your game, university.com. Work on your game. Dre, all day.